Hello and welcome to an average player's guide to playing Zool. Um, let me see here. EU, I played about, they made his rework, or right before the rework, I stayed playing a bit, and then after rework, so about 30 games, give or take. I figure I got the gist of Zool, come over to NA, my main server to play him, and I got a 52% win rate, 13 and 12 in 25 games. At one point, my highest win rate is like 57 or 58%. I was thinking maybe I could get them to 80%. I got Zagar to 80%. I had Murky to 80%. They always fell to 66%, 60% because of matchmaking punishes you after you get an 8% win rate. Um, so, if I'm honest, I stopped playing a long time ago because they started giving me the most group stupid shit. Uh, the game I was just in, I just lost two straight games and I said, fuck it. I'm not going to be able to get Zool to an 8% win rate. Previous game. I had four person group of my team that had a healer. Do they have a tank as well? No, I can't. They had like whatever, right? They had their comp. And they got owned by the enemy team. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You're not even taking fucking camps. You're not doing anything. And the game before that, I had two people who died over ten times. And another person who died nine times. Nine death medieve. Like, <sighs> so this shit's just triggering me. I mean, <sighs> am I supposed to wipe your asses for you? I'm like, what really pisses me off is when I'm in games, no one takes the camp. If I ping the camp, it's like herding camps or herding cats. I'll go take a camp, but then, then, then the fucking idiots on my team who don't take the camps now want to come help me take the camp. Are you fucking kidding me? I can solo the camps. I don't need your fucking help to take the camps. Fuck off. Stay in lane. Get the XP. Nope. Nope. They take the camps when I go take the camps. Ugh, the stupid shit they do. They always want to get in team fights when I'm not there. They don't want to clear lanes. They don't want to take the camps. So this is why I've got a high win rate with specialists, Hero League, and doing quick match because of the stupid assholes. This is why I can have a high win rate with specialists because I'll take the camps, clear the lanes. I'll do the shit you fuckers don't want to do. Just don't feed and we'll win the game. That's all I require. Don't 4v5 or 3v4 or 3v5 or 2v3 or 2v4. You know, play safe. Don't go past the half point in the map. There you go. You're not going to fucking die. We will win. We will beat them out. But nope. They got to feed on top of that. Not only do they want to do what they need to get done, they want to feed on top of that. So with Zul, I... Fuck. I hate mirror matches, so I go against another Zul, which is... It's already pissing me off. Or I got teammates who are feeding. Heavily feeding. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? So I can't get Zul to an 80% when I'm fucking done playing Zul. I pay 10,000 gold to unlock his ass. Because I thought I could get him to 80%. Win rate, but no. So it's 10,000 gold, 750 gems. He's a melee specialist. Difficulty is medium. Let's try. I'm going to show the abilities. Uh, former pro player Dunk Train. He, yeah, he was a sport player. He said a couple of Zul talents. He said uh, were like trap. Well, he said a Zul talent is a trap talent. There's like certain things it's referred to as some talents in the game for just trap talent. You think is good, but they're really not good. Uh, he was talking about that on. Hot's podcast. Oh, what the fuck is it called? It's the longest run in one. Oh, shit, I can't remember the Hot's. I can never remember Hot Podcast when I refer to them. Anyways, um, see, my buttons are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? While default is Q, W, E, R, and then D for your trait. So, unless I was remember, when people talk about Q, W, Q build, W build, this and that, unless I misheard. He was referring to the W build as that's the one to go with. And at first when I played Zul, the new improved Zul, I agreed with it. But actually, I'm thinking actually the Q build, which referred to the trap build, is actually the better one to go. Get to that in a second. So first, up here is Bone Armor. And at level 1, you got three choices to choose from. So what this does, cooldown 30 seconds, activate to gain a shield equal 25% of Zul's maximum health for 3 seconds. So the first one you could choose is Backlash. When Bone Armor expires, nearby enemy heroes take damage equal to 15% of the maximum health. If the enemy team has melees, then take this. You know, they got at least have like two melees. If they've got three, even better. More melees, the more likely you want to, you know, take this Backlash. I've used this to run away. And because if they know what it is, the green on the bottom, then the enemy will... I'm running away using this as well in the past. And like you're running away there, and then oh, they fuck off because they don't want to take that 50% damage, which sense is silly because if they're at full health and I'm low health, so I have to lose 50% of the damage, they're still going to kill me. But people who don't know any better, they see that AoE shit, and you're always trained to get out of the AoE. 
avoid the AoE, blah, blah, blah. But they do fuck off. But generally speaking, this is a town you don't run away with. You want to engage with at full health to use it. So if the enemy team is melee heavy, take this one. Uh, Shackler is the one I prefer, though. Uh, while bone, uh, bone armor is active, nearby enemies are slowed by 35% for one second. So it's good when you're running away because it's got uh, it's good, nice range. Um, basic attacks against enemy heroes that are stunned, rooted, or slowed reduce the cooldown of bone armor by two seconds. So this year, Shackler is the one you can spam this a lot more. That extra 25% health, which is good, you engage with it, or you can use to run away. It'll slow them down when they're within it, it gives you more of a breathing room. So depends how long how their melee range is. Like Zul's melee, uh, 1.5 is his melee range. How you know is there like three or is there two or whatever it is? So eventually I'll give you that gap to get away. So generally speaking, I like to take this in shade. I would really like, but there's a problem with it. While Bone Hour is active. Zul evades all basic attacks, but increases the cooldown of Bone Arm by 20 seconds of Y. I think it used to be 30 seconds, and then they nerfed it because they're like, oh, it's overpowered. But this is good. Like, this means every 50 seconds you get this. Now, how often are you in combat? Are you in combat once a minute? And then you could still take Shade. But if you're in combat all the time, every 20, 30 seconds you're always in combat, how good shade you really going to be? You're going to get more value out of Shackler then, especially if they're in your face or backlash than you are with shade. But the enemy team has got auto attackers, like, you know, then this is good. But this is more of a, oh shit, Tracer's now on me. I, I press shade so her auto attacks can't lower my damage. I've been in as well against, um, you know, Sonya and this and that, and I've used shade, and I'm like, holy shit, I lived. It was like this group orgy going on in the center. Holy shit, I lived and I've been attacked just because I had shade too. So I liked it from that standpoint, but I don't like if it was every 30 seconds, then I would take this more often. But since it's a 50 second cooldown, it's um, more between these two. You see Shackler here. Now you can see the the distance. So this from, what about there? Was that 2.0 range? See, I'm not, because they've got 1.5 attack range, 5.0 attack range, blah, blah, blah. So how far is that out? I don't know, but it slows them down. Plus, some people get scared off. They see it. If they know better, you're low health, and they even know what the color is. Well, you'd know anyways. If they didn't know what the color was, even if you thought it was backlash, you get into it, it slows you down, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, generally speaking, to use your armor to run away, if you're already low health anyways, and they're full health, they'll just chase you down if they have the opportunity. So it's like, man, yeah, but it still can help you get away and live. But I prefer to use my armor for engagements. Anyways, so that's level one. I gotta set the level. Let's go to level 30. Let's set that shit. Okay, now let's go over the abilities. Let's just go back here to do that for level one. Okay. S Spectra Scythe, or whatever the fuck it's called, Mania 55, cool on 8 seconds, summon a Scythe that travels to Zul after 1 second, dealing damage to enemies. Obviously this is level 30, so huh, that's not level 1 damage. That's what it looks like, and then it follows you, so you can, well, let's just toggle cooldowns. You can fling it and then run away, and it'll follow you and do damage. So it doesn't, once it appears, it does damage. It doesn't go does damage there and comes back, it appears, and then it comes down to do damage, and it follows you back. Uh, cursed Strikes, mana 60, cooldown 15 seconds. Zul's basic attacks deal damage in a wide area and reduce the attack speed of heroes and summons by 40% for 2 seconds, lasts for 4 seconds once triggered. So you can do this. So, you know, your basic attack damage is at level 30. Uh, 338, and this makes your basic attack damage then AOE 338, and it's our long range. You see that's pretty wide, so you can get the back minions. So here we are. Um, what the fuck am I doing? I don't know. But once I trigger it, I got, you can see it on there, but when you hit that person, and then they're for f um, two seconds, 40%. But the attacks last for five seconds, and because Zul's 1.2 attack speed, oh, uh, yeah, 1.20 attack speed, you get five of these. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. And let me see here. And you saw that little thing on him is the attack speed slow. So once you stop attacking him, then it expires two seconds later. 
for this. One, two, three, four, five. And as you can see this, you don't have to worry about your attacking. It's not going to stop you. So you're using this and then you can pop. So you don't need to pop this first and then you don't need to hit your scythe, whatever, then your Kush strikes. You can do Kush strikes and then use your spectra, spectra or spectra or whatever. Because it's not going to lower from five of those to four. It won't interrupt that. And this here is Bone Prism. Mana 80, cooldown 12 seconds. After a two second delay, deal 260 damage and root the enemy tar target hero for 1.5 seconds. All nearby skeleton warriors fixate on the target for the duration. So if you got any skeleton warriors up, they'll attack whoever is rooted. I think this used to be a two second root. And this is what it looks like. Sometimes I, I feel like when I'm Zul, I'm like, oh, this doesn't have enough range. But when I'm against the Zul, it's like, fuck, like, shit, that range is too far. How the fuck did he get me? Because I'm always thinking I'm farther away, but... Obviously, I'm like, I feel like, ah, oh, shit, I get too close to use this. And then other times, like, Zul comes to me and, like, shit, he was... Oh, that's too... He was... I thought I was safe. I thought I was a little bubble range there. The trait, uh, Rise uh, Skeleton. When a nearby enemy minion dies, it becomes a Skeletal Warrior with 974 health that attacks for 75 damage and lasts up to 15 seconds. Up to four Skeletal Warriors can be active at once. So let's go to the menu wave. Okay, let's reset shit. Uh, where am I? I always miss it. It's always down. It's down there. Okay. So we're going to use this. Now, generally speaking, a minion wave, the best way to do it is to attack from the side. So you get the mage. Oh, you little cunts! Oh, you little fucking goddamn cuck sucking motherfucking cuck. And I wish this thing, I always fucking say this when I do these, would fucking save. They used to save your settings. Now it doesn't fucking save your settings. I want to stay at level 30 when I join this shit. And I don't want any fucking heroes. Let's do this shit again. Goddamn. Okay. Come on, you little retards. Get in your fucking thing. Come on. There you go. So you attack the mage. And you see here, you swipe. There we go. But you can still, if you're close enough, get the back. So uh, if I just reset the forts, toggle minions off. But I can also do it that way as well. Come on. So they will get in the line. So you can still hit the back, but you're for close enough. If you're a little too far, but you're right in that, the melee minions, I forget what the fuck they're, the warrior minions right in their face. If the warrior, you right there, warrior minions, you can get them from the back. And besides, sometimes not optimal to go then to the side because put you at a position, plus it takes time to get there, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the things with Zeal, though, is no real, well, I guess you could kind of still start a step while you're doing that, but I never try to do that. I don't go. And then try to go here because I'm not going to get full value out of my thing. So, but whatever. Um, then, because you got that nice range on it, you want to be right up there, the front of the warrior main. Just make sure you get the the ranged attackers. Because if you're a little far back, you're right here. And the mage is right there, or the warrior is right here. Then you're going to just miss the ranged ones. But you go from the side, you're guaranteed to get, or you just face plant or right in their face, you'll get the back ranged ones attacking. And you see there are little skeletal wars that rise up. Four, there they are. So you got your bone prism, those little bastards will attack. Okay, level four talent, uh, Reaper's Toll. Quest, hit 20 heroes with Spectra Scythe? Uh, whatever. Reward, reduce the cooldown of Spectre Scythe by three seconds. We're going to call it Spectre Scythe. I don't think it's called that. Sith Scythe? Not Sith, but... Uh. Uh, first, I looked at that all. I wouldn't take that. Such a stupid talent. Blah, blah, blah. Because it's five seconds instead of eight. Blah, blah, blah. Um, change my opinion on going with the dub or the Q build. But we'll get that in a second. Uh, Grim Scythe, uh, any, each enemy he, each enemy hit by Curse Strikes reduces its cooldown by 0 0.5 seconds up to 10 seconds. So this can be every 5 seconds, this can be every 3 seconds, or this can be every 5 seconds, this can be every, this can be every 5 seconds, and this, they both can be every 5 seconds. Once you got it, you get this finished, 
this is every five seconds and you if you hit enough enemies within your strikes you get your five strikes off and you blah 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 up to ten this can be done so five seconds or five seconds they both can be reduced down to five seconds in the past like if you're on depending on what map you're on like Tomb of the Spider Queen or uh, Black Hearts Bay maps where you can two lane generally speaking I've gone with this because I'm in the mini, allows my enemy team to group up as a four. They don't necessarily do that, of course, but they can group up as a four. I can solo lane two lanes at the same time. You know, I get right there. I'm hitting, there's seven of them. I'm hitting them five times. This has been down to five seconds. I go down to the next lane. There's minions. I got this up again. Whack, 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 whack. Go back up top again. Whack, whack, whack. Do it again. But if you once you get this down to five seconds, you're not going to need this if you take a later talent. I'll get to that in a second. I'm still. I was playing around going with this build for a bit though to see if maybe that'll increase my win rate. But then some of the teammates I've had just been so horrible. I'm like, oh, it just doesn't matter. But this will be more helpful, though. See, some camps, like let's say like Morales or like. Uh, Lucio, you can. There's no camp in the game. You can solo, but generally speaking, all the heroes in the game can solo certain camps. It depends on what map, because there's all there's various camps in the game. Some you can solo. Some some heroes only a certain amount can solo because they're tougher to take. Going with the um, Q build, you can solo the more tougher uh, camps, so you don't have to rely on your teammates. So you're doing that, and it's still it's going to help you with the lane clear. You won't need this with the lane clear. You could just do this solely for the link here, but it's not going to help you take the camps faster, whereas this will help you take the camps faster and still do the lane clear if you go with this, this build. And this is also going to help you for team fighting, versus this isn't going to help you for team fighting. I mean, if the enemy team is melee heavy, that's like, this is the thing. They've got like a all melee team, sure. But usually there's range and they're firing shit at you. And if you're the only melee or whatever, you won't be cannon fodder where you're just going to be hit. You're just gonna be snuffed out really fast. So how much value you can get this? You can get more value out of this. So really, the Q build is better than the W build. I started once I went to any server, play tests and stuff. EU, I was like, nah, the um, what? Dunk trains, right? It's the W build. If I remember correctly, I almost thought about watching that podcast again just to make sure he was saying the W build's the one you go for, not the Q one. Just to be W or just to be. Unless I got my P's and Q's mixed up, I just want to make sure he's referring to that and that. Because after I started playing with the Q build, I'm like, you know what, actually the Q build is better than the W build. Maybe he doesn't get it because he's a support player, That how much better it is to go with the Q build. So that's why I was thinking that, nah, maybe I misheard or the Q and W, I got those two flipped around. But yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it was the Q build he was referring to because there's a later talent later on that has three scythes going back and he was referring to that, but actually this is the better build to go with. And jailers. Uh, bone Prison spawns two Skeletal Warriors, so you can have a total of six. These do not count towards uh, Zul's uh, raised skeleton maximum. Used to at one point, the old Zul, you could have six, plus those two there for a total of eight. Spawn E Skeletal Warriors while fixating on enemy a reward, this is the reward. Skeletal Warriors gain 50% movement speed and attack speed. Now, one of the things I do agree with what Dunk Trade said is build upon Zool's already good at clearing lanes by default because you get those Skeletal Warriors. So don't so build upon areas that Zool's weak in, and Zool is now a better PvP fighter with the changes they've made, and you want to build around that. And also you can take camps. Sure, you can now take the lanes faster, but so what? This would help you take the lane. Well, this actually, this takes lanes faster. This takes lane faster. This just, you know, increases their attack speed. But this also helps too, in a sense, because once you get the reward, your rise little things, they, well, movement speed doesn't matter unless enemy heroes trying to run away, but they're just attacking other minions. You know, their attack speed, those increase by 50%, which helps clear lane faster. Like he's already good at this, but this isn't really gonna help you PvP wise. This isn't gonna help you P this will help you PvP wise. So you take that one. Uh Harvest Vitality, Cursed Strikes, heals for sixty percent of the damage dealt to heroes. So your auto attacks, like you're att auto attacking one hero, six percent of that you get healed back. Uh five attacks. Eh, not much healing, but okay. If on the other hand, melee heavy team, then you can get a lot of value out of this, right? 
But generally speaking, I don't take it. If the enemy team is merely heavy, then I can I think about it. But yeah. Uh, Weaken. Increase the attack speed dur reduction of Chris Spikes by 35% and the duration by one second. So instead of two seconds, it's three, and it's a 75% all attack speed reduction. This works against... Uh, what the fuck is his name? It'll do really well. But Tracer, like... You see, that's not going to do much good unless Tracer's in your face, and she's in your face because she wants to uh, pistol whip you and then put a bomb on attached to you. That's not going to do you any good, is it? What you want is see this. If you could automatically auto attack something from back here, then this would work against Tracer. You know that range auto attack right at the tip there. You could all attack race, uh, Tracer or any hero or enemy from back there, then that would work. But since Tracer's got to get in your face, or say Illidan's in your face, then Tracer's back here, then she gets hit. I Naturally, of course, it's good against Tracer, but nah. It's not, she needs to be in your face. And generally speaking, she's in your face, it's not good. She wants to pistol whip you and then attach a bomb to you, so fuck that. I don't want Tracer in my face, so. Um, no, I tend not to take that. This is the one I take to tech. Um, tags, taggles, taggles, essence. Every time a skeletal warrior attacks an enemy, restore 1% of Zul's maximum health and 0.4% of his maximum mana. Old Zul, I think they had those two talents separated, if I remember correctly. But now it's into one. I take this. Uh, two reasons why. First thing, if you're doing specifically the PvE part, because you're double soaking, this helps with sustain, so you don't have to tap the goddamn mana well for a health or mana, because you get, well, regen well, whatever. Why not? You can stay in lane, you're not missing out any XP. And two, um, while if an objective or a team fight, or, well, team fight doesn't have to be 5v5, 3v3, 1v1, you want to jump in, or what, why not? Um, sure, if it's over here, that's not going to, you're not going to get any you're not going to raise any skeletons because you're not in lane to get any health. But if you're fighting in lane or near lane, anywhere close where your skeletons riz because you, your trait, once they attack something, you're then going to get some health. Not much health, but some health is better than others. You know. Especially if the little bastards are getting a lot, they're allowed to get all these attacks in. And then, yeah, you're going to get the health right back up. You know, I've been at the enemy's core before. I'm a little below 10% health. I let my I stay back, let my skeletons raise, then my health went back up to like twenty five percent or something like that. I got my shield ready, I go back in, I'm over fifty percent, like fifty five, sixty percent total health, and I was able to go back in, finish the game off. I had to riz out, you know. I don't even think that game I even had a healer anyways. But maybe your healer's out of mana or they're dead or they're doing something else, they're distracted, trying to help keep someone else alive so you stay back. So there's benefits to this. Plus, once you raise your Skeletal Warriors and then you leave, there's, you don't have to stay. Your Skeletal Warriors raise here, you don't have to stay here to get the health. You then go down here to save fight boss. As long as your Skeletal Warriors are alive and attacking something, you're getting health and mana back for it. So overall, this is better than this, I find. Unless, like I said, the enemy team's melee heavy. Now I'm going to get more value out of this. And it depends also what you're doing. Are you double soaking? Or you're always in that part trying to get part of that team fight and blah 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 blah. But generally, I prefer that. Okay, Poison Nova, mana 100, cooldown 90 seconds. After 1.5 second delay, release poisonous missiles that deal a lot of damage to all enemy hit over 10 seconds. It used to be 1% of their max health per second, so a total of 10% for as long as it lasts, as long as it wasn't cleansed. I believe 10% over 10 seconds. So 1% of their health each second. I can't decide, has this been a buff or is this a nerf to it? Um, no, this is a buff. Well, at level 30, what would... It depends on the hero's health, right? Like, 10% off of Diablo is more hero damage for you. But it also means it's more healing. The hero, the healer has to do for the that hero. Because they've got bigger health pool. That's why it's like the whole... Giant killer, you know, 1.5% of someone's health is equal, whether it's low health or high health. But it just it means the healer's got to um, use more heals 
towards the tank because they got heavy health because you eat away. It makes it more, you know, it's easier to heal some of lower health than it is a higher health when they've got Giant Killer against them. That's why Giant Killer, a lot of people like Giant Killer for that reason. Even though the math is still the same, I mean, yeah, you're getting more. 1.5% is 1.5%. Sure, you get more hero damage out of it, but it's just because it's like anti heals or it makes it more pressure on the healer. So, 10% uh, on Diablo is going to be more for the healer to heal than 10% on Jaina because Jaina's got a thinner health. But Diablo at level 30, what is he? At level 20, I think he's like. And it also depends if he's got the souls to boost up his health as well, depending on what build Diablo went. But what Diablo or Stitches, what's their maximum health they can get at level, at level 30? I mean, it was 8,000, 10,000, I don't fucking know, but, you know, let's just say 10,000. I don't think it'd be as high as 10,000. Got the talent buffed up or whatever, but let's just say it was 10,000. 10% 10 of 10,000 would be 1,000. So, this is 1,800, so this is a buff then. Yeah, this would be a buff. And let's show you what it looks like. I'm standing right here, and I hit. But I tend not to take I Overall, I think it's shitty, though. You know, it's been buffed. It's not how the fact that it's 90 seconds. It's the fact that you can miss. Like, from here, you stand still. That one, it did hit. Okay. There we go. Ah, oh, fuck you off. There we go. See, it missed. Like, you, the farther away you are, like, it's got a nice spread, right? Which is nice. But you can dodge it, though. Like, if this coming out was a hundred like a full 360 and it spreads out that far then I'd be more likely to take it see in the past I was like Poison Nova, Poison Nova was the one if you wanna even though Zul wasn't good at PvP fighting he used the PvP talent because you know if you hit them but if you miss you just always hit your alt you know if this was a 360 if they change this where it's a 360 then I this is a talent to consider taking but you can dodge this See, look at that. They could stand still, or they can move out of the way. Let me see. I'm pretty sure, is it, although, is it 360 from the start? There's no way you can miss. No, I don't think you can miss when you're right up to there. Because I've had them pretty close before and still miss, and I didn't like that at all. But I need that to reset, but it's going to last for 10 seconds. But I can see it getting hit. Now, there's no way to miss. So it's like a guaranteed 360 right at that, right around there. But there's like, you're like, oh, oh, but if, what if I'm standing right here? Look, I missed, woohoo. But then of course, it depends how big your hitbox is too, where that one right there would hit you. But you know, look further away, more likely to hit. So you really want to get in there, but sometimes you really don't want to get in there. So close anyways, depends on the team comp, right? And, and blah, 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 maybe the situation, your health, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, like I, this, cause I like, well, okay, this is guaranteed, but sometimes I don't want to go face to face and get the enemy hero a kiss. But if I could stand back here and it's a guaranteed, I'm going to hit the fucker cause it goes this far away. And it's 360, whether they stand still, the only thing to avoid is to outrace it, go back that way, which can out position people. Cause it's like these ones run back, but these ones don't blah, blah, blah. Because you put people in position, that's another way, you know, zoning people, that's another way to win a team fight, then yeah, but it's not 360. So the one, i got to reset the talents. Okay, the one I take is Skeletal Mages, 70. I used to think this was the PvE talent, so, oh shit, you know, you use this, you, you drop these little fuckers to um, run away. Because you push too deep and you're paying attention to the minimap or something like that, and there's only one of them on you, blah 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 type of shit, but actually... And this is the PvP talent, see? Aha! Now, uh, okay, I should just read the talent. Da -da -da, go over here. Skeletal Mages, mana 80, cooldown 70 seconds, vector targeting, summoning four frost mages in a line that attack nearby enemies for 152 damage a second and slow them by 30% for two seconds, lasts up to 15 seconds. Well, it says it lasts up to 15 seconds. These little bastards can actually last up to 15 seconds, like... This is the thing. You're in a team fight. Yeah, they're fucking annoying. They're attacking you. But this is the... I thought all four would hit. I guess it's... The, how, I guess they're... I've, yeah, I've noticed that sometimes not... Yeah, so you gotta get that roof within how close they are. 
to get all four to hit. So that's a lot of damage too, if you can really get in their face. Um, what the fuck here? Okay, you're in a team fight, like, sure. They're, they're not that, they're not buffy or anything, they're not beefy. You can take them out, but you're in a team fight, and then these things, these little fuckers pop up. What are you going to do? You're going to take a few seconds and waste your abilities or whatever, attacking them? Like, okay, this is, this is an enemy, this is you, you're attacking each other, but then you pop down this. Are they going to, what, stop attacking you just to attack that? If they do... Sure, your mage won't last up to 15 seconds. Well, it's up to 15. It won't last fit the full 15 seconds, but they're now not damaging you. So that would be a benefit if they're to be silly to attack this. To stop attacking you, it gives you more of a chance to finish them off. So, generally speaking, these things will last the full 15 seconds because it's silly to attack them when you have that. Uh, when they're running away, of course, you know, they either continue to run, which and they're being slowed, and then they're finally out of range. Or, let me see what's the max range. Da, da, da. So this can hit from here. If I pop one behind it. Ah! That's another thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can just, with the mouse here, just, so I just press the 3 button, right? Or if I hold down the 3 button, like it depends how you have, then I can rotate it. So sometimes when I press this, it's not getting off, depend on... I'm like, ah, how come this thing didn't summon you? Because sometimes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I could just, like, oh, wait, this is the four button. Hold on, the four button, and just, like, here we go. So, hmm, where to plate this? Well, generally speaking, you don't want to be an AoE, right? AoE, it's already on the ground, or, you know, this is you. You want to avoid the AOE because then that sucks. Let me see here. Like how fast is where he's got his AOE on the ground? Then you don't want to plant it there, or like they've got the objective and it's a bruiser, or not bruiser, it's a Punisher, and it's about to do its AOE and you don't want to place it there. Shit like that. So where you want to place this down in team fight depends on the situation. Uh, they're trying to get away. You're on your mount. You put it in front of them, so it knocks them off. There maybe one of them on the mount. Already, you're cutting off. It was a 1v1, and the person's running away, and blah, 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 or it's a team fight, you're coming down, you place it there, it hits, knocks them off. Anyone on the mount knocks them off, and it slows them down for your teammates to catch them, catch up on them. <sighs> or it's melee, this and that. Like, place it behind, because you see the range. Here you are. So, it's got a nice range, but sometimes I'm. I guess it's like because I'm clicking here, I'm clicking there, and it's. I guess it treats it as like sometimes it didn't. The fucking thing didn't come down since you can spin it around, right? Have it this way, have it that way, blah blah blah. But I don't know it's something like a gut feeling, like because there's various scenarios that happen where you're coming down. Okay, where you want to place this? Uh, no AOEs on the ground. What's optimal to like cut off from here to there? They're running away. You want to place it in front of them. If they're fighting here, like this is the the mages. This is here. Melee's here. You could do it, stick it there. So if the melee then so it's from behind, but they try to run away. It slows them down. But then a Gina or a Ming, maybe some AOE shit could be dropped on it here. But more likely, they're not going to waste their their big AOE shit on there anyways because they were gonna want to well this would block min's missiles and shit or hit would get destroyed but in general it's like hmm does she want to use her blizzard on this or she actually want to hit the if she wants to use her blizzard on here so she's gonna miss it but then it would she comes this way and it's gonna start attacking her slow her down just so she can place her blizzard on us and by then we could reposition maybe the melee's already dead blah 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 shit like that but still you're fighting here you could just put it where you're fighting as well so, but this is also a way, another thing is like, you're low health, you guys want to run away, you place it right in front of your teammates. So, it slows down, they get away, blah 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 type of shit. Because you wouldn't want to place it back here and your teammates are running to it because they could be dead by then. You want a cock block, either way, use these things for that. Um, yeah, whatever, you just, you get used to it, you try it around, screw around with it, blah blah blah, and... It's just a gut feeling of a situation. You know, yeah, this is where I want to place it. Because what the enemy team has and all this other shit, you got to 
because you want these things to last as long as possible too. Sure, they're not going to go out of their way and attack it because they're then that's good for your team if they're going to go the way and attack it. But you don't want to put it down in areas that are already being flanked with AOEs and shit like that because then the things are going to be destroyed too. You know, unless they've already blown their AOEs, then you could place it there, right? So you got to know if they've already used their AOEs and all this other shit, you know, calculations, takings, what the fuck I'm trying to say. And so you go by your gut. You know, experience with different heroes you try this with against I mean team blah 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 so this is like that trap talent uh, echoes of death which I used to agree with uh, spectra scythe spawns two additional scythes uh, next to the first after 1.5 seconds dealing 75% damage so it's the damage of this oops I took the talent then go over the other talents so cause I'm like okay you fling this but then the other two come down here like okay that person just stays there they miss it that's pretty bad you know but then you can move to do that. Plus, it collapses on you, so they're chasing after you. Okay, knock them off mounts. That's not okay. Uh, I want to take camps. You take. I've learned this from the pro players. You take the mage. Once you take the mage out first, and you like stutter step to the one there because then the other ones always have to chase, right? Blah blah blah. Okay, so that wasn't really whatever. But you see that, how the value comes in, especially if you get that reduction. And if you already don't have, depending on how the game goes too as well, right? If you're more into PvE, what are you doing more? The PvP stuff, the PvE, you can already have your 20 by then. If you don't have it by then, this in a team fight will get you. Plus in a team fight, they all shouldn't be standing in a line, right? They should be standing, maybe the mage back here, mage back there. Range assassin here, or whatever, auto attack, range assassin, Vala, Ming. There's tank, and then you fire, and then oh look, you hit those two now, and it collapses. They're chased, melee's chasing after you, this and that. So yeah, at first I agreed. I thought this was a shitty thing. Like when I like even before, like he mentioned it, I thought I looked over the talents and stuff because they're doing their, they always do it the PTR before release. I already knew like there's gonna be this spikes. And I go nah, that's. That's a stupid talent, and then when the pro player says trap talent, I go, oh, yeah, I agree, but I actually no, <laughs> I don't think it's a trap talent at all, because it's going to be helpful in team fights, and it's going to be helpful for taking camps. And sure, this is good for the lane clear, but you get your even if it's still eight seconds, eight seconds versus fifteen second cooldown, right? Well, if you get the down to five seconds versus eight, but depends how fast you get to the next lane anyways, and when the minion uh, spawn, they get there, because every 30 seconds they spawn from the core and they gotta walk down the lane, and march down the lane, and if you get this down to five seconds, it's even better, so five seconds, five, five seconds, and this will clear the minion wave nicely, you don't even need to use this, and if you have this build, you won't need to use this to clear a lane, so like both can clear the lane, but this one's better at taking camps, and this one's better at the PvP. So this is like one out of three. This is three out of three. Lane clear, camps, PvP, or just lane clear. So actually, the Q build's the one you want to go with, generally speaking. But try all the various builds, this and that, to see how it was. Originally, I uh, actually liked Executioner, but we'll get to this one next. Uh, rapid Harvest. To gain 5% attack speed for three seconds each time Cursed strikes... Cursed, yeah, Cursed Strikes hits an enemy up to 75%. No. I thought, hmm, what about the nerd math about this? Is this better? Because you're doing the, 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 well, melee heavy enemy team. I thought about this would make sense, melee heavy enemy team. You know, you compare, you'd want this <sighs> with that. But it, it's after, it doesn't make this swing faster, if I remember correctly. Oh, I could just reset the talent. Oops, nope, 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 nope. Reset the talents. Okay, level 13. Harvest strike. So our attack speed, 1.20. Oh no. Yeah, this that is swinging faster, isn't it? Yeah, it does swing faster. So you wouldn't have to wait until... But then once it expires, then it only lasts for how many seconds? But no, okay. So the max speed, too, is 2.10. 210. So... Two attacks, over two attacks a second, doing this, melee heavy enemy team, then yeah, 
I would take that, especially the fact you're getting heals. And the lower cooldown as well, because you're going to be taken for that. You want to build around that. Melee enemy team, melee heavy enemy team, I would definitely go with Curse Strikes build then. Because you're getting the heals, you're getting faster auto attacks, and you're getting the resets on the thing. So you're doing this, yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. But, during speaking, what I've gone with Execution, which I liked. Attack an enemy hero that is slowed, rooted, or stunned, increase your attack damage uh, by 30% for 3 seconds. So, if you got Shackler, you got your own slow. Uh, Bone Prism, you got your own root. And if you are got teammates who've got roots or slows or stuns, you know, increase your attack damage all the time by 30%. So I was going with this, but actually I'm going with this. So, yeah. Okay, level 16. Amplify damage. Enemies rooted by Bone Prism lose 25 armor for 1.75 seconds. Um, for Zul, that's about, well, it's 120 attack per second. So you should get two, at least two attacks off. Maybe three attacks off while they're rooted. And of course, if they're right in front of you, usually people about to get rooted, they tend to move away. So maybe you get two attacks or one attack off. But if they stayed right there, they're rooted. Best case scenario, you're going to get three attacks off, but I think it's just going to be, well, actually, I could root and then count, right? Well, no, just root. Okay. One, two, th yeah, it wasn't even three there. Uh, let me see here. But they lose 25 armor, and you do 30 percent increase attack damage so that should be what 55 percent increase attack damage your auto attacks hmm your auto attacks now do 55 percent increase damage sounds nice but that's only over you only get two attacks in to increase it by that but it would increase this though by 25 percent because they lose 25 25 armor equals like 25 percent increased damage from this right so in a sense that you could you would get damage from that but you only get two attacks off AA's off, and it's like, is it really worth it? Well, if your team's good at always being on whoever you root, because you're always placed on the right target to be rooted, or whatever, this, the game's just flowing that way, then yeah, especially someone who's beefy, like a Stitch is, help you, you know, squat and finish them off sooner, or a healer, whatever, whoever you target, then yeah, I'd go with this. This is more of a team, this is not like a Zool focused talent. I used to take that as a Zool focused talent, but now it's more of a team talent. Corpse Explosion. Skeletal Warriors die when they explode for 179 damage in a small year. Deals 100% increased damage to non-hero enemies. So once again, you could build upon your lane push. It's even faster lane push, but what's the point? You don't need it, and it's not going to help you for team fighting. And Bone Spear used to be level 20 talent. Now it's level 16. Cooldown, 12 seconds. Deal 747 damage to enemies in a line. It used to be 10 seconds, but now it's 12. And it's like, hmm, both for 12 seconds, so... Originally I went with this Amplify Damage, but no. We're going well as a team, then I'll take this, right? So we, everyone's, you know, everyone's damage is like, since boosted by 25%, to finish them off as fast as possible. But generally speaking, I'll go with this. Especially how, you know, Minion Lane, they're, they're, they, are, they do a single line until they come across an enemy. So you can fire, and look at that range, you can fire that off. Boom. Or maybe you can you see a stealth, unless you're using this and they can avoid, but you, know, you hit them, boom. Especially when you got all three, when you got three of them coming back, trying to f hunt for, st you see the little move there, use that as a scout, you can hit, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so I do tend to take that, boom. but that's more magic, your F1 or F2 key, well, mine's F1, F2, for everyone else, it's, I guess, the one or two key. Um, okay. Andreas Visage? No, that's Andreas. No, uh, whatever. Uh, Poison Nova heals 50% of the damage dealt. Skeletal Warriors deal 50% increased damage. So, yeah, Poison Nova was more of a PvE talent because it increases the damage of your Skeletal Warriors by 50%. So, if you, you can keep building upon, you know, um, your pushing ability, but what does it matter? Plus, later on in the game, you know, are all the keeps down? Then what's really does that matter? And plus, later in the game, you're deeper in the map. 
it's further to go from top lane mid to bottom if it's a three lane map or two lane map then it's top or bottom and of course your deep enemy core deep enemy territory becomes more dangerous especially if you don't have vision you know versus over here you're safer even if you don't have vision but you're still safer more likely to get away versus more likely to be ganked some you know blah 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 all that stuff so it's really do you need to build upon a push build no build upon what Zul doesn't have uh, cold hand of death increase the slow frost mages by 20 percent skeletal warrior attacks slow enemies by 30 percent for two seconds so if you did although pick this with the two skeletals though the bone prism shit this see that's another thing you could just still pick the two skeletals here because you know what build you're going with and you're like okay i'll pick the two skeletals because at level 20 if this game lasts that long i want the two skeletal warriors that summon there in this fight because we're not fighting a lane right we're fighting someone that's not in a lane, so I'm not going to get any value from that unless we're fighting a lane. So I'll have this buff where the two little bastards are is just to slow them by 30%. You know, so then I can auto, if you build upon the increased attack damage from your AAs of 30%, so you can do that 1v1, it helps you 1v1. Uh, they try to get away, it slows them down, or just in a team fight, it slows them down, blah, blah, blah. You, know, you could build around, you could take it for that. That 30%. Slow is obnoxious, not 50%, so it's even more obnoxious. If they're melee heavy, for sure, or maybe I got behind the ranged assassins, I placed it behind there to slow them down that 50%. It really does make a difference, but, you know, I really do like this one. Kalan's Edict, Kaelin's Edict, or whatever. Skeletal Warrior attacks reduce the cooldown of Zul's heroic ability by 1%. So, how many attacks they have uh, was after 15 seconds, so it's 15 seconds. Should that not be? Is that 1% supposed to be? Well, 1%, 70. 1% of 70? Is that what it is? Because it's not one second, right? Because that would be 15 seconds plus how many there is? 4, 15. They last for 15 seconds times 4. Yeah, they've never respawned that fast, but you can see this does cool down faster. So it's got to be 1% of 70, which would be what, 0 0.5 or 0 0.2, blah, 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 four of them res. Because it would just take one wave, minion wave to reset this. And I know it's not that fast, but it does save X amount of time. I wish it just said like 0 0.1 second, 0 0.2 seconds per attack. Then you can times it by 15 times four. Uh, best case scenario, but yeah. Anyways, I tend to like to go, I switch between this one and this one, depending on how I'm feeling, because I like this. I can use this more often, especially in a 1v1 fight, especially if you take that increase. Like, I've been a little too cocky, though, I must say, taking the Executioner, or I'm doing that extra damage, that unexpected extra damage, it's can scare the main team, and use that 1v1, but I've also tried 1v1 people, and I've paid for it, because generally speaking, I wouldn't try to 1v1. But I took execution. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But if you're gonna always go for execution or build, try that solo build who you can take one v one this and that. Um, you definitely want the slows and shit like that. And you'd want to start off with skeletal mages. Then, I mean, you got your bone armor. You go first the slow to blah blah blah, and then um, from there, naturally you think, oh, you go with the root. But that's 12 seconds versus if you use your skeleton mages first. You f then you can use a bone prison if they're about to get away from that. Because it resets the. Because it's been how many seconds your fight? From that 70 seconds, it's now, say, 60 seconds. You live, the enemy dies. Sure, you don't have it for the team fight overall, but you did take them off the map. And later game deaths are more important than earlier game deaths as well. And then, of course, you go in lane. And this resets fast enough that, hey, look, now the objective just happened, and now this is ready to use again. Right, that type of thing. You could try to do it like that. But I don't know, it depends how you like to play. Play different ways, try different shit, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, I'm done playing, I guess, Zul for now, because I'm just a little pissed. At least Zul NA, because what I'm trying to do with the NA server is I'm trying to get that, I had a 70%, or is it 69? Was 69.9 the highest I had? I'm pretty sure at one point I did have exactly 7% win rate. It was either 69.9% or 70% win rate. And then 
when my 80% win rate heroes, the Gara Murky went down, so did my win rate drop, plus then I'd play a little Leoric, but then, and then I played Zul, and 50% win rate was Zul, that's, I'm not getting that 7% win rate, I want that 7% win rate for quick match NA, so when I do Hero League next season again, it should get me out of gold, and perhaps platinum. If I'm really lucky, diamond, but I'd have to have a high, like I figured maybe like a 90% win rate, but then how many games you have to play as well, right? You know, 90% win rate after 100 games, or 90% win rate after 1,000 games, or who the fuck knows, but it should get me at least platinum. So, oh, right. well, thanks for watching.